What's up guys, welcome to AB Auto. Today we're gonna to be doing eight tips and tricks with paddle shifters. First up is paddle shifter extenders. Now, unless you own a supercar, chances are your paddle shifters are attached to your steering wheel. This means when you turn your steering wheel, the shifters move with it. So if your car has short paddle shifters, this can make it really tricky when going around tight bends or roundabouts having to reach the paddles. So paddle shifter extensions are a neat little mod that extends your paddles to make them larger so you can reach them in those situations. They can also look really cool and give your car interior that extra sporty feel. So here's an example of paddle shifter extensions. I found Audi, for example, to always have small paddle shifters, even in their S or RS models. Let's take a look now at the difference between an Audi with and without the paddle shifter extensions. So here's before, and here's after. A good thing about paddle shifter extensions is they're so simple and so easy, pretty much anyone can install them. Usually they come pre-fitted with a self-adhesive, so all you do is just peel the back off, and then you stick them on your existing paddles, and there you have it, larger paddle shifters. One of the coolest things about paddle shifters is they often come with some really cool special features and tricks. Now this can obviously vary from cars and manufacturers, but here's some cool ones that I found in my Mercedes. First up is AMG Emotion Start. Now all you do is press and hold one of the paddles down, hit the start button, and the car will perform an AMG Emotion Start. This will start the car up with the valves fully open. It will give it a little bit of throttle and some AMG magic to give you the best startup noise you can get. Another neat Mercedes trick using paddles is to use the paddle to switch from semi-automatic mode back to automatic mode. So if you're driving in regular automatic mode, then you decide to use one of the paddles to shift up or down, your car will go into a temporary manual state. But what if you want to switch back to auto? Normally you would have to wait for a minute or two for it to go back to auto, or you'd have to press the manual button twice, but there's a little trick you can do to get straight back into there using the paddles. All you have to do is push down and hold on either the up shift or the down shift and wait a few seconds and bam, it will go straight back into automatic mode. Another cool feature that I've used that I think most automatic transmissions have, it's quite popular in racing, is the double tap shift. So you can either just double tap down shift or double tap up shift. And if done correctly, it should shift and skip a gear. So Mercedes like to pack some really cool features into their car, but if you don't have a Mercedes, don't worry, other manufacturers have got some cool tricks with the paddles too. If you want to find these features, the best thing to do is join a Facebook group for your car or join a message board for your car. There's always loads of useful threads or even YouTube, there'll probably be some other videos like this one. So does your car have any cool tricks with the paddle shifters? Um, maybe it's a Mercedes, maybe there's some that I don't know about. I'd absolutely love to hear about them in the comments. So please post a comment guys, I always love the comments. Next up is engine braking. Now engine braking is a way to slow down your car using the gearbox rather than your brakes. So you can use the paddles to help you come to a complete stop. Or while driving at a high speed, you can use the paddles to gradually slow down the car so you don't have to use your brakes as much. Now, engine braking can be really fun, but there's also some good benefits. Firstly, it's gonna reduce the wear on your brakes. Second, if you start to use the paddles to slow down your car, then you're gonna be going to a stop much smoother and much passively. You're gonna have a lot more control in your car. This, of course, all means less wear, less heat, and less fade on your brakes. Engine braking can also be a much safer way of driving. It's always gonna give you more control over your car, especially if you're going up and down a steep slope or if you're driving in the snow. Lastly, it's better for your engine. Now, let's dispel the myth here, people, because a lot of people think engine braking can damage your engine, but the truth is there's no way engine braking could possibly damage your engine. Let's think back decades ago when engine braking was relied upon with drum brakes. The core design of the engine is to run thousands of revs per minute for hours at a time. This is the way your engine was designed to be driven, so it's actually good for your engine. Now, it might seem a bit jerky at times, but I promise this is not going to cause any damage to your engine or your transmission. 
So engine brake your hearts out, people. I promise it's not gonna damage your engine. The next one is simply having fun. Get to know your car, guys. Get to know the gears. Get to know those little sweet spots that really make you smile. <laughs> and now we have a tunnel coming up, so I can really show you what makes me smile in this car. So what makes me smile in this car is second gear. We're gonna do it one more time. Yep, second gear is what makes me smile in this car. So that was just me having a bit of fun earlier, guys, but the tip really is find that sweet spot in your car and experiment. Now remember guys, an automatic transmission is not like a traditional manual. It's really hard to mess your car up with an automatic transmission, even in manual mode. This is a fully computer assisted system with tons of safeguarding in place. It's not gonna let you break your car, I promise. Let's talk about the two manual settings paddle shifter cars usually have. First, you have your semi-automatic mode. This is a temporary manual mode that's activated when you press one of the paddles while driving. If you do this, you'll enter a semi-automatic state. You'll now be in complete control of your gears, but if you're too slow, the gearbox will intervene and change gear for you. Now, if your car is equipped with one of these buttons, you're very lucky because this will activate full manual mode. Hit this button and you are now in total control over your gears. Now, a huge benefit of having paddle shifters is driving in dangerous conditions. For this example, we're gonna be talking about snow. Now, if you've ever driven in the snow, you know one of the biggest mistakes you can make is using your brakes too much. Now, we talked about engine braking earlier, but this is when engine braking really shines. By using engine braking in the snow, you can keep your braking to an absolute minimum. I like to use the gears to gradually slow the car down to avoid having to use the brakes, which will ultimately lock up the wheels and you can lose complete control of your car. Shifting manually also allows you to stay in a much higher gear, and everyone knows that when you're in the snow, the higher the gear, the better. So when used correctly, manual mode is by far the safest option for driving in the snow. Number seven is do not be afraid. You will not wreck your transmission or your engine. Like I mentioned in one of my earlier tips, there is tons of safeguarding in place. This is a computer assisted system and it's not gonna let you break it. So really this tip, I wanna just say, do not be afraid. I wanna encourage you to have a play around, get to know your car, get to know the gears, get to know your favorite gears, get to know when to shift and when not to shift. You've got total safety and confidence to just experiment and get to learn it all. But I just wanted to explain this further and reinforce it for you guys. So um, just for an example of safeguarding, these are the following conditions when your car will not shift even if you try and shift, even if you're in full manual mode. If you're driving really fast and you try to shift into a really low gear, the car is not gonna let you. The computer systems and safeguarding is gonna say, nope, this is gonna really hurt the engine. No way am I doing this. And in this car, you get a nice red flashing pulse on the screen to let you know. The car will also not respond if you press both paddles simultaneously at the same time. It also won't do anything if you press down and hold one paddle and then press the other paddle at the same time. And if you're driving around really slowly and you try to go into a high gear, it's also gonna stop you there too. For example, if I was driving around 10 miles an hour and I tried to go into ninth gear, it wouldn't let me. And lastly, if you're stationary, it's not gonna let you go any further than second gear. My last tip is about keeping your foot on the accelerator pedal when changing gear. Now, in a normal manual car, you'd be accelerating, then you'd take your foot off the accelerator pedal, press down on the clutch pedal, and then change gear. But in an automatic transmission, there's only two pedals, the accelerator and the brake. There are clutches involved, but you don't control them with pedals. So my final advice, guys, is can you accelerate and change gear at the same time in an automatic transition? And I'm gonna say yes, absolutely yes. In fact, I would encourage it. You could be accelerating down, flooring it at 100 miles per hour, and you want upshift, 
then all you need to do is just press the paddle and upshift. You don't need to let go of the accelerator and then upshift while you're not accelerating. It's a completely different system. Now, if you're used to a regular manual, you might find this a bit weird at first. I mean, I certainly did. I kept letting go of the accelerator to change gears and I found it just hindered my hindered my driving and made me slower. Um, it's, it's actually quite fun when you're flooring it and changing gear. You get used to the motion. So there we have it, guys. That is my eight tips and tricks for using paddle shifters. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please hit that like button because as I always say, it really helps me in the channel out. And if you want to see more tips and tricks and more content with this car, if you liked what you saw with this car, I've got loads more videos, so please check them out. But you know, if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all my followers and my subscribers. Love you guys. I'll see you all next time.